Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com, and today we're going to talk about BMSs, or battery management systems. Ah uh, yes, to be MS or not to be MS? That is the question. But to answer that question, first we're going to have to talk about what a BMS is and why you might need it or not need it. As you probably already know if you're into working with lithium-ion batteries, these batteries are made up of a number of individual cells that are arranged in series to increase the voltage. So for example, if you want to make a 36 volt battery, you'd have 10 cells in series that increase the voltage all the way up to 36 volts. Now as you charge and discharge the battery, the voltage of each of those cells goes up and down. Now that voltage range is actually pretty critical. If it were to drop too low, you would risk damaging those cells. If you were to charge the voltage too high, you could risk turning the cells into a literal fireball. And that's where the BMS comes in. Now the BMS doesn't actually charge a battery, but it sort of stands as the gatekeeper in between the charger and the battery itself. So when charge comes in from the charger, the BMS will make sure that the battery doesn't charge too high and it will cut off charging once the cells reach full voltage. On the other hand, when you're discharging the battery or using it, the BMS will also cut off any current from the battery if the voltage of the cells drops too low. So it makes sure that the voltage of the battery stays in a safe range. Now, they usually have some other protections too, such as uh, overcurrent protection if you pull too much power or thermal protection if the battery heats up. But the main thing is watching that voltage range. The second job of a BMS, and this is what is found in most common BMSs, is a balancing function. So if we go back to our example of a 36 volt battery with those 10 cell groups, as you charge up and then discharge those cells many times over dozens or hundreds of cycles, you'll find that the voltage of the cells might start to drift a little bit. Some of them will be charged a little bit higher, some of the cells will be charged a little bit lower, and this is just a natural process of these different cells working together and being charged up and discharged so many times. Now if you don't have a BMS and you don't take care of this imbalance, it will begin to grow over time and you could end up with a large discrepancy in the charge of the different cells in your battery. So what a BMS does is it balances the battery each time you charge it. Once the first cells get full, it drains those cells down a little bit and it waits for the other cells to catch up. So eventually, all of the cells remain at the same voltage after each charge. That means that a BMS is really the most convenient way to care for your battery. When you have a BMS in the battery, you can treat it basically like a battery in your laptop or your cell phone, where you simply plug it in and let it charge and do its own thing. And when you're using it, you don't worry if you're going to drain it too low because it'll just turn itself off if it runs out of charge. So a BMS is really a sort of hands-free way to manage your battery safely. But there are alternatives to a BMS that some people like to use. And the most common alternative is to use a combination of you manually monitoring your voltage to make sure you don't drain your battery too far and using a balancing charger to charge your battery and balance the cells. Now to use a balanced charger, you need some extra wires coming out of your battery. Unlike a normal battery like this 36 volt battery that just has a discharge and a charge lead, if you look at a battery that's designed to be balance charged, you'll see that it has other wires coming out of it called balance wires. These balance wires are designed to interface with the charger so that the charger can actually monitor what's going on in the battery and it can perform all of the balancing functions that a BMS would normally handle. When you're using a balanced charger instead of a BMS, you need to be very careful looking at the settings on that charger and making sure that you not only plug in your battery correctly, but that all of the settings in the charger are correct, whether it's for the chemistry of the battery or the number of cells or the capacity, all of these things need to be set in the charger to make sure that it charges correctly. Now many balanced chargers do have some protections built in, such as making sure that the number of cells that you have programmed into the charger matches the number of cells that it's reading from the battery. But you always want to make sure that you've got the settings exactly correct because it is very easy to make one small error when you're setting up your balance charger and have it overcharge your battery, which again could result in a fire hazard. Now I'm not trying to scare you away from using a balance charger. There's a lot of people that prefer them because they give you the utmost control over what's going on in your battery at all times. However, you do just need to be very cognizant and make sure you're paying attention very carefully every time you charge your battery and you don't get on autopilot just plugging things in and clicking charge because that's how accidents do happen. 
And BMSs are designed to prevent those accidents by making sure everything is already handled within the BMS and it's entirely hands-off for the user. All right, so now we get to the two different camps on BMS opinions. On the one side, you've got the BMS evangelists who are saying, oh, you have to use a BMS. It's the only way you can charge a battery. If you're not doing a BMS, then you're doing something wrong. Then on the other side, you've got the anti-BMS extremists who call BMSs battery murdering systems and say if you use a BMS, you're going to destroy your battery and you should never touch them and the only way to charge is by balance charging. So where's the truth? Well, like you probably guessed, the truth is found somewhere in the middle. Now battery management systems do work very well when they're good quality. The problem is that there are a lot of cheap battery management systems out there and when people try to save on money and they buy these just super budget BMS boards, sometimes there are problems. And if the BMS uh, either fails or part of it stops working, it's going to be hidden in your battery and you probably won't know it. So in such cases, yeah, sometimes BMSs can damage the battery that they're actually meant to save just because they've failed and you'll never know it happened. So my rule of thumb when I'm choosing a BMS is that I try to look for one that's not cheaper than about $2 per cell in series. So for example, on a 36 volt BMS, which is a 10S BMS for 10 cells in series, I'm probably not gonna buy one that costs less than about $20. If it's cheaper than that, then I don't really wanna mess with it because I don't know how you can make it that cheap and still have quality components. Now again, this is a really loose rule. You don't need to stick to this or you know follow it exactly, but it's what I use to kind of guide my purchases. So if I'm looking at like a 14S BMS, it's less than about $28, eh, it's starting to get into cheapo land. But to totally avoid the chance of having a BMS fail, some people just swear off of them entirely and go only with balanced charging. And that can be a very good system. Now you do want to make sure you get a good balance charger and that you 100% understand how it works. Read the manual, watch uh, videos and tutorials, make sure you know the exact settings for your battery. Because again, if you choose the wrong settings, it is very easy to overcharge a battery and cause a fire. But if you do go with balance charging and you understand your charger and you do it correctly, it can be a great system because you'll know exactly what's going on in your battery and you'll have 100% control over it. However, there is one other thing that you have to know about if you're going to be balance charging and not using a BMS, and that is that you have to constantly monitor your battery voltage when you're discharging. That means, for example, if I have my batteries on my e-bike, I need to have some way of knowing what the voltage of the batteries is at all times so that I don't accidentally drain them too low. And the two most common ways to do that are to use either a voltage alarm, which looks something like this so that you'll just plug right into the balance wires of the battery, or to use some type of LED voltage meter. And as long as you know what your voltage is, you can be very careful not to go too low. However, you also have to resist temptation to push it just a little further. If you hear your voltage alarm ring and you're on your e-bike and you're starting to get close to home, you need to know that you have to turn off your bike now. You can't try and eke it out and get a few more miles out of those batteries. If you had a BMS, they'd just cut you off and you'd have no choice, you're done. But if you are controlling your own batteries, you might want to just push it a little further because you don't want to have to get off of your bike and walk. But it's very important to make sure that you actually cut it off at a safe level and you don't push your batteries past their low voltage level. So to answer the ultimate question about which is better, a BMS or no BMS, you probably guessed the answer. It just depends on your personal preference, whether you want a hands-off, easy to charge, easy to use approach, or whether you want a more complicated but uh, better controlled system where you know exactly what's going on. If you were to ask my opinion, I almost always go with the BMS and I just choose to use a high quality BMS to make sure that I've minimized my chance of having a failure. And sometimes if I have a mission critical battery, such as when I built a battery for my nephew's um, electric uh, Shelby Cobra car, I just used two BMSs because I wanted to make sure that I had uh, an extra level of redundancy. Just in case one BMS failed, since there are going to be little kids on this electric vehicle, there's another BMS to take over. So in my opinion, I always like to use a BMS when possible because it just makes for the easiest charging and discharging and there's no chance to make a mistake once you've got the battery set up. But at the end of the day, it really depends on what is better for you. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you found that video helpful. 
Last but not least, time to announce the winner from the giveaway of my last video, and the winning commenter is... Mass Evangelism. So congratulations, shoot me a message, let me know which one of my books you'd like, either the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, DIY Solar Power, or the book that will teach you a lot more about BMSs, DIY Lithium Batteries. And for anyone else who wants a chance to win one of my books, just put a comment below this video, anything you want, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. Thanks for watching everybody, see you next time.